when I got back, when I was younger, and I'd talk to people who had never been in the military and never been to Vietnam or anything, um, the first thing they would, not the first thing, but generally the, one of the first things they'd ask is, what is it like to kill somebody? Well, even today in my classrooms, when my students would talk about my experiences and my, you know, places I've been, things that I've done and stuff, even today, though, occasionally a student will ask me that. And I generally just blow it off because you can't really tell anybody that. You can't really answer that question. But that was a common question. What is it like? And the reason they ask that is because they'll never experience it. You know, it's one of those things they'll just never experience. So uh, the closest thing they can do is to ask me what it's like. But over there, depending on, again, on where you were and stuff, what you were doing, you did it like on a routine on you know, a routine basis. So, um, but even even that, you know, I'm thinking back on it now. I hadn't thought about this until just now. It's hard. It's almost impossible, I guess, to tell somebody, to answer that question, you know, what I'm talking about. But over there, you know exactly what it was like. Usually when you're operating your weapon, you're not shooting at people. You're shooting into the jungle where fire is coming yeah. from. Yeah. Um, and there's a certain relief in that because you don't know if any of the bullets, the weapon you're shooting yeah. fired and hit any of those people. Mm -hmm. um, but there is one incident that you describe where there is no ambiguity. And uh, it has to do with the, the VC guy on, on the bridge. Are you willing to share mm -hmm. that story? Yeah, yeah, sure. There's always um not always but 90 percent of the time when somebody a young person's in combat they um and i think it was probably that way during world war ii and maybe korea too but when they don't actually see the people that they kill you know they just think that they probably killed a few people here or there they don't actually see that but the first time you ever do see that the first time you actually observe it and you're that close to it and you know that you did that What's going on around you at that time, or who the people are around you at that time, sort of dictates how you're going to deal with that for the rest of your life, really. And I was lucky because the people that were around me recognized what I was going through and what I was thinking, and they sort of set me up for success with that idea, that feeling for the rest of my life, really. But if you're in by yourself or in a bad situation, you know, that could really screw you up for a long time. But we were we were actually on a quiet patrol. We were observing. We were going up this river, this canal, because there had been some sightings of some D.C. flags in the area. And we were trying to go up through there, just move out and draw fire type thing. That's sort of what we were doing. So we had gone up this canal and we had cut our engines. We were drifting backwards back down through the canal. When we went past this canal, it sort of ran off on the a right angle from us. When we first got in view of the canal, it just shot straight off to the to the right, about 90 degrees. Just right about 15, 20 yards or so down there, there was a bridge, a walk bridge across there. And um, there was a VC flag on at the time, but there wasn't anybody around. So we just kept on going up. But when we drifted back, I was on the aft gun. So I was the first one to come in the side of that bridge when we actually came inside of it. And it was a real hot day. Everybody was tired and drowsy and sleepy. And I was on the back gun trying to stay alert and stuff. When I first came in sight of it, I looked and there was a young guy, VC, on the just about in the center of the bridge, right below that flag with a AK, you know, just looking at the water, or just, he was probably as drowsy as I was. And as soon as I saw him, I opened up on him and killed him. Knocked him off the back of the bridge when he got hit. He was trying to run off the bridge, and I got him before he got to the edge of the bridge, and he, he just flipped off the back, was off the back of the bridge when I hit him. And at first, it didn't, you know, we were, Everybody opened up then, and we 
fired up the engines and got out. And at first, I didn't think about it, but not short, not long after that, just when we got out in the middle of the river, I started realizing I just killed that guy. And my buddies around me, you know, came back and we talked. And so it was just, uh, you know, one of those experiences, the first time type thing. And, uh, you you say what you you know what you've written, if I remember right, that and I want to ask you the name, but that you you have given him a name. That you you've given this young Viet Cong guy a name, is that right? Metaphorically in the book, I was talking about how occasionally when I'm thinking about it, I kind of talk to him, you know. Just Musing just a little metaphorically, and I was trying to describe that in the book. Mm. Yeah, um, let me. I, I want to um, just read that. Read something. You say, as close as we were, I could easily see his eyes widen for a moment, then suddenly take on a look of resignation and sadness. He smiled slightly, as if to say, "Okay, you got me. I should have been alert." Um. As I read those words, I imagine you you can see him. There he is. Yeah, I do every once in a while. It's not a real bad feeling or anything, though. It's kind of a kind of a sad feeling in a way. But because um, you know, he was probably a lot like me. We we were probably close to the same age, pretty much. And uh, he might have been standing up there thinking about his girlfriend or something. Mm. <laughs> you know. So um, the, the very the very last um, sentence of your memoir. Now, in this case, you're talking about the 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 Navy guys you served with. So you're mm-hmm. referring to them. You say we will meet again in the mansions of our Lord. And, you know, a, a couple of them have ha- had passed away when you'd written that. And we'll meet yeah. again in the mansions of our Lord. For the sake of discussion, let's say that you meet this kid in the mansions of the Lord and you'd have a chance to have a, a short discussion. What what do you suppose you might say to him? Well, I probably wouldn't say I was sorry because he would understand. Um, I'd probably talk about what he was feeling at the time, what he was thinking at the time. If I was right about what, about him saying or thinking, okay, you got me. Um, We'd probably talk just matter of factly. I don't think there'd be any real emotion, or he wouldn't be mad at me, or I wouldn't be scared of him or anything like that. It would just be kind of like running across an old friend you hadn't seen for a long time. So, Mm -hmm. I think. I I mean, it's interesting you say he would understand because, of course, Mm -hmm. things could easily have been flipped around. He could have had a three second advantage on you. Um, and just the image I have in my mind is of young men who have just their paths have crossed and they've equally they've both been thrown into the disastrous world of war. And you situation. Yeah. 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 We um all of the times I've ever been involved in combat situations, I've always known that that the people that I was charged with trying to kill were not a whole lot different from me. They might believe different things, but nine out of ten times they probably wouldn't know any more than I did about what I was doing there.